Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. It sure is an honor and a joy for me to be with all of you here at St. Philip and St. James for Sunday Mass. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. I understand we have many parishioners here this evening, and also guests from the surrounding parishes in the Bronx uh, who are very uh, loyal and generous benefactors of our Cardinal's annual stewardship deal. They've come and to give me a chance to thank them. So it is very good to welcome all of you so that we might offer this greatest of all prayers, the holy sacrifice of the Mass the more worthily. Should we call to mind our sins and ask for the mercy of Jesus?
heartfelt devotion, these days of Easter joy, which we keep in honor of our risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance of Him, we may always hold to in what we do, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him, and falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up, saying, Get up, I myself am also a human being. Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Then Peter responded, Can anyone without water for baptizing these people, who have received the Holy Spirit, even as we have? We ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. God is love. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because God is of love. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he has loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord.
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the, ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command, this I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Well, everybody, I thank you again. It is, it is really an honor and a joy for me as your Archbishop to be with you here at St. Philip and James Parish. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. If, of all the many duties that I would have as your Archbishop, this is the one I enjoy most to be at one of our 300 parishes in the Archdiocese of New York for Sunday Mass. This, when I come, like tonight, it gives me a chance to, um, to let you know how proud I am to be your Archbishop, how much I love you, how very grateful I am to you for your love and your loyalty to Jesus and his church. So I welcome these occasions I know tonight, not only do I greet uh, the parishioners of St. Philip and James on this Saturday night after their feast day, but I also have the chance to thank those who are with us who were invited so that I might let them know how grateful I am to them for their generosity to the Cardinal's annual stewardship appeal. I'll be able to visit with them after Mass to let them know that personally. Would you mind in a special way if I would let your good shepherd, your pastor, Father Stephen, know of my esteem and my gratitude to him. Father Stephen, thank you for being a, a good shepherd. brother in the priesthood, another Father Stephen, both of them are apostles of Jesus. And am I ever glad that we have them in this archdiocese, what great apostles they are. <laughs> and Father Robert Rodriguez is here, and my brother Deacon. They're just plain old priests and deacons of the Archdiocese. <laughs> you know, if anybody, if anybody asked, what does the word Catholic mean? What does the word Catholic mean? I'd say, why don't you come 
to St. Philip and James Church in the Bronx and C. Because Catholic, of course, means everybody. Yes. Catholic means universal. And we see that tonight. Um, even Father Stephen, before Mass, was introducing me to people from different um, African nations who have come here, um, African Americans. He told me about the Latino presence in the parish, that there are still some Anglos here who have been here for generations and generations. This is a real model, isn't it, of what it means for the church to be Catholic. And so I salute all of you in a special way for maintaining that beautiful, that beautiful sign of the one true church. Father Stephen was so proud of the church as he, he showed me the wonderful renovations. Look how bright and clean and welcoming this church is. And you can tell our apostles of Jesus are known for their teaching. Look how teaching this church, this church is that everything has a lesson and everything has a reason and a symbol for being here. And when people walk in here, they're just reminded of the essential truths of our beloved Catholic faith. So you have a wonderful parish here at St. Philip and James, and I love you for it, and I thank you for it. And we got, we got 300 of them in the archdiocese, okay? And that's why I'm so grateful to so many of you for your support of the Cardinal's Annual Stewardship Appeal, which allows us to help all of them. You know what I thought I'd do for just a minute tonight in my sermon, which won't be long, is to speak about mothers, all right? Because tomorrow's Mother's Day, right? So will you let me speak about mothers for a couple moments? And I want to speak about our own mothers here on earth. I want to speak about our Holy Mother, the Church. And I want to speak about our Blessed Mother Mary. So our own mom, Holy Mother Church, and our Blessed Mother Mary. I was just on the phone to my own mother uh, on the way here as I try to check in with her every day. She's 92, in good health, thank God, and uh, lives in St. Louis, my hometown. And I was able to see her last weekend for the first time in about 10 months um, because of the corona uh, lockdown. So it was a happy, happy day. We love our moms. We thank God for the gift of our moms. And Mother's Day is a chance to show that. What a magnificent part of God's plan that we would all have mothers, right? What a, what a magnificent part of God's plan that his love and his tenderness would be revealed to us through our moms. He uses that example in the Bible. He says, can a mother ever forget the baby at her breast? Neither can I, your God, forget you. So he uses the love and the tenderness of moms to remind us of his love for us. And that's a great gift. And that's why we say Happy Mother's Day to all you dear moms. Second, where Father Stephen is used at home? Do you, talk, do you get to talk to her? How old is she? She's 83. She's 83, but in good health? Does she ever get to come over? I've been running. And I had to do it three times, and my people were very disappointed. Well, I am too. You make sure you bring her to see me when she comes over. Yeah. How often do you get back, you and father, the other father, see you get back? We normally go during the summer. But, yeah. Father, the other father, Stephen, you, is your mom still alive? Oh, she's gone to the Lord. Okay, well, happy Mother's Day to your mother, dear Father Stephen. Here's number two, Holy Mother Church. See, the church is a mother, too, for us. We give her a traditional name, Holy Mother Church. And you know why? She's our family. Uh, just as our earthly mothers give birth to us, our Holy Mother to church gives birth to us in the sacrament of baptism. Just as our earthly mother feeds us, so does our spiritual mother, the church, give us the food of the Eucharist. Just as our earthly mother forgives us when we go to her in tears, sorry, so does our Holy Mother, the Church, forgive us in the sacrament of penance. 
Just as our earthly mother is there when we are sick, so is our spiritual mother, Holy Mother Church, there with the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. Just as when we're afraid or when we're discouraged, our mother, our mother can talk sense to us and encourage us, so does Holy Mother Church offer us that strength and encouragement in the sacrament of confirmation. She's our mother. She gives us brothers and sisters, those who are with us uh, as members of Holy Mother Church. And we're grateful. It was said, St. Irenaeus said, we can't call God our father unless we call the church our mother. Because it's in the church, in Holy Mother Church, that we discover God our Father. And here's number three, our Blessed Mother Mary. It's interesting, Father Stephen was showing me all the versions of our Blessed Mother that you have throughout the church. And there are so many of them from so many different countries. And that's typical because we all picture our Blessed Mother Mary, the Mother of Jesus, as we do our earthly mother. So when she appeared in Mexico, for instance, in Guadalupe, she was dressed as an Aztec. So when she appeared at Fatima, she was dressed as a Portuguese maiden. So when she appeared at Lourdes, she was dressed as a peasant woman of the Pyrenees. You see, on and on, she shows herself to us as a mother, our Blessed Mother Mary. God thought mothers so important, God our Father, that he did not want his only begotten Son, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, to come to earth to save us without being born of a woman, without having an earthly mother. And as his last gesture on earth, remember, from the cross on Calvary, before he returned to his father in death, he gave St. John Mary, and he gave St. John to Mary. In that gesture, Jesus gave Mary to all of us. She became our mother as her own son was dying on the cross. So that's what I want you to think about today. Our own mothers, we love them and we thank God for them and wish them a happy Mother's Day. Holy Mother Church, how grateful we are to be part of a church as diverse as, as everybody, as it is here at St. Philip and James. And our Blessed Mother Mary, how great it is that we would have a heavenly mother as well as an earthly one. And aren't you glad I have a little cold so I can't preach long, all right? <laughs>
Let us pray. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop, Tidney, Timothy Cardinal Dolan, may the Holy Spirit continue to bless them with good health as they shepherd the church. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For the church, that we may share generously with those who suffer from want, embodying our Lord's command to love one another and showing the way to the Father who is love, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For all mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, and expected mothers, those who have been like mothers to us, those who have given us life and love, that we may show them reverence and love, that they may know the value of their nurturing presence in the love of our families. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear for those who remember to pray for during the Mother's Novena, especially those names who have been inscribed on our prayer envelopes, that the good Lord may grant us our intentions on their behalf. We pray to the Lord. For all who are in need of prayers, those that are in hospitals, those in nursing homes, those confined to their own homes, that through our prayers they may feel united with this community of faith, and that the Lord will touch and heal them. We pray to the Lord. In the silence of our hearts, we can add our own intentions. 